Hey everybody, welcome back to the Elon Musk podcast. This is a show where we discuss the critical crossroads that shape SpaceX, Tesla, X, The Boring Company, and Neuralink. And I'm your host, Will Walden. If you want uninterrupted episodes of the Elon Musk podcast, please go to clubelon.supercast.com to find out how. There's a link in the show notes. Elon Musk has announced that his AI venture XAI will release its chat GPT competitor, Grok, to the open source public domain this week. It's a strategic move by Musk, who has consistently criticized OpenAI's profit-driven use of AI technology, and it marks a shift in AI development and accessibility for a large language model like Grok. And by open sourcing Grok, XAI is set to join the ranks of companies like Meta and Mistral, which have already made their AI models freely available for modification and use by everybody. And the decision to make Grok open source comes on the heels of Musk's legal action against OpenAI, a company he co-founded but departed from in 2018. And Musk's lawsuit accuses OpenAI of straying from its nonprofit roots and original mission, alleging that it has instead pursued profit maximization, particularly following its collaboration with Microsoft. Now, the legal confrontation has sparked a big debate in the tech community. And what are the merits and the risks of open sourcing AI technologies as opposed to keeping them closed sourced and for profit? Well, Musk's critique of OpenAI's transformation centers around its shift from an open source, nonprofit organization to what he perceives as a profit focused entity closely aligned with Microsoft. Now, according to Musk, this contradicts OpenAI's stated commitment to developing AI that benefits humanity at large. The lawsuit and Musk's vocal criticisms highlight the growing tensions between ideals of open innovation and the realities of funding and profiting from advanced AI research. Now, myself, um, I'm an open source kind of guy. I'm a developer. I've been developed apps for companies that have gotten millions and millions of uses. And I've open sourced some of my technology that large corporations have used. So I'm a proponent of open source. I'm also a, a proponent of capitalism and making money. And so I understand the two points that are being discussed here. But the announcement of Grok's open sourcing was made by Musk on X, of course, it used to be Twitter, and it's challenging OpenAI directly and other leading AI developers. And by offering Grok as an open source tool, XAI aims to democratize access to advanced AI potentially fostering a more inclusive, innovative field of AI development that's not confined by the commercial interest of a few dominant players. It opens up the playing field. Now, the debate over open sourcing AI is not new, but has gained fresh momentum in light of Musk's lawsuit against open AI. And proponents argue that open access to AI technologies can accelerate innovation and application across diverse fields. However, there are significant concerns about the potential misuse of open source AI including fears that it could be exploited for harmful purposes such as terrorism or the development of uncontrollable AI entities. Now, Musk's vision for AI governance includes the creation of a third-party oversight body, a concept he advocated for at least last year's AI Safety Summit in the UK. And such an organization would monitor AI development across the industry, providing a check against potentially dangerous or unethical applications of the tech. This proposal reflects Musk's ongoing concerns about ethics and safety implications of unchecked AI. Now, Musk and XAI and also Grok were driven by his desire for the alternative to the AI development models pursued by OpenAI and Google and Microsoft and larger companies. And Musk aims for XAI to embody a commitment to maximum truth-seeking AI, he says a goal that underpins the decision to open source Grok and engage a wider community in its development and application. Now, Musk's position on open source AI was further clarified in a conversation with Lex Friedman last November, though, where he lamented the development of open AI from its original open source ethos, scathing, and his remarks underscore this tension between the fundamental principles of open AI and its current operational model, which Musk perceives as overly profit-driven and restrictive in terms of access to AI technologies. 
Now, this lawsuit against OpenAI presents a pivotal moment in Musk's long-standing relationship with the organization. Having been a founding member himself, Musk's departure from the board in 2018 was a huge turning point for the company, leading to his current adversarial stance. His legal challenge raises important questions, though, about the commitments and responsibility of AI organizations and their alignment with broader societal interests. OpenAI's response to Musk's lawsuit has been to assert its continued dedication to developing AI in a matter that benefits humanity as a whole. The organization argues that the scale resources required for advanced AI development necessitated a shift for a for-profit model, a decision that Musk was purportedly in agreement with in 2017. Now, this defense highlights the complex balance between uh, Musk's ideals of open sourcing AI tech, but also the necessity, the absolute necessity of the money that you need to buy these chipsets, the NVIDIA GPUs that you need to drive the way that these things function, it costs a lot of money. And sometimes open sourcing uh, technology doesn't make you any money. And most of the time, that's the case. Now, to make money, OpenAI has different business models. But Elon Musk thinks they should be completely open and no privatization of it and no way to capitalize on the finances of the people like myself who pay for OpenAI. And uh, the legal battle between Musk and OpenAI is also complicated by the definitions and expectations surrounding artificial general intelligence. Proves that OpenAI has deviated from its mission involving um, open sourcing everything. And they're demonstrating that ChatGPT4 or its successors constitute AGI, a challenging task given that the current state of AI technology and the evolving understanding of what actually AGI entails. Now, the controversy surrounding OpenAI's direction and Musk's lawsuit could have broader implications on the AI industry, potentially affecting OpenAI's market position and the trust of its customers and partners. I don't think it's going to really do that much, though. I, I think they're going to be competitors in a weird way. I think Elon is more competitive than Sam Altman about this. Sam knows his role. He knows what's going on. And working with Microsoft, he almost has an infinite amount of money and capital coming into the organization. So he won't really have to worry about that. And the recent turmoil within OpenAI, including the temporary dismissal of Sam Altman, has already raised concerns amongst stakeholders about the organization's stability and the governance. But Sam is back, back on the board. And amidst these developments, Musk continues to use his platform on X to critique OpenAI, of course, and advocate for a more open approach to AI development. His interactions with users on the platform reflect strong opinions on the need for transparency and accessibility in AI, as well as his skepticisms towards OpenAI's current trajectory. Now, I want you to think about this for a moment. Do you think Elon is um, kind of mad about being booted from OpenAI? Because he, he's gone in 2018. That's something you have to think about. You can't just sit back and accept things the way that they are. Uh, there's really no reason for Elon to lie to us, right? Uh, but could he be upset that he's not part of OpenAI now, seeing all of their current success and how far ahead they are than a lot of the other AI technologies out there? Um, there's a possibility. I just want to keep that open. Make sure that you keep an open mind about these things because you never know what's going on behind the scenes. And Grok and the way that Elon is expressing that he wants to take everything open source now, which he didn't before. He didn't say anything about that before. Um, why would he do that? So just think about that. Could it be the reason? Uh, could be maybe, maybe he likes the idea of open AI. Um, you know, chat GPT is not open uh, for a paying customer. It's not open. You can do numerous things with a paid account. Chat GPT is open to the public. You can use it whenever you want to. Uh, there are limitations, but I mean, it's a free tool for everybody to use. Um, but they don't open source their code. And that's where Elon 
is different than OpenAI. He's going to open source the code, apparently. We don't know how much he's going to open source, though. So he could open source 100% of this and give everybody a free license to do whatever they want with Grok. Or he could open source certain segments of the code. If he does the certain segments, and it's not really open source in my opinion. As an open source developer myself, if you're going to open source something, open source the whole thing. Make a tool for somebody, make the whole tool available to everybody. So the way that he open sources this is going to be a very, very interesting tell on what he's interested in. Could he be just opening, open sourcing something to throw in Sam Altman and open AI's face? There's a possibility. Is he spiteful? Is he a spiteful person? Um, that's up to you to decide, but there's a, there's going to be some interesting things happening around open AI and Grok in the near future, because I mean, any open source competitor to chat GPT is going to be welcomed for everybody. If somebody could build off of Grok. Also, that's the other thing. If he open sources in some certain licenses, open sourcing, you can make derivatives, but you also have to make sure that eventually if uh, Grok and XAI go private again, you take some of your money that you make from this thing because you could open you know, like an open source project. If it's fully open source, you can do whatever you want to with it. You can make as much money as you want to from it. But if he rescinds the license at some point, uh, there's a possibility you have to pay the guy or you have to pay XAI for the tools that you built and the money that you made from it. So it, we have to really be careful of these open source projects. Um, and which parts of them that he's open sourcing. So we'll have more information about the parts that he's open sourcing in the future, of course. Uh, it's a strategic move, though. It could reshape the dynamics of all AI development. There's alternative models now that prioritize accessibility and community involvement uh, over control and profit. It's a potential to catalyze a new wave of innovation in AI. But also Meta has done this before, too. Meta's open sourcing most of the stuff. Um, so, you know, how much is it going to change everything? We're not 100% sure. But there's tensions between Musk and OpenAI. Um, power and control. Uh, it's going to be in the hands of tech giants now. Sam Altman, you know, a rich guy. Elon Musk, super rich guy. They're tech giants. There's no difference between uh, XAI if it's closed sourced and open AI if it's closed sourced or if XAI goes open source it has to go full open source or it's not real true open source so everything should be open source the language model uh, that's that's up for debate but the technology running the language model if you supply your own language model that's okay in my eyes so it's going to be an interesting next three four weeks that's supposed to happen sometime this month and the, the outcome of Musk's lawsuit against OpenAI and the impact of Grok's open sourcing remain to be seen, though. It's going to happen in the next few weeks, and we'll be here for you. Hey, thank you so much for listening today. I really do appreciate your support. If you could take a second and hit the subscribe or the follow button on whatever podcast platform that you're listening on right now, I'd greatly appreciate it. It helps out the show tremendously, and you'll never miss an episode. And each episode is about 10 minutes or less to get you caught up quickly. And please, if you want to support the show even more, go to patreon.com slash stage zero. And please take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you tomorrow.